Hello explorers, it's that time again, it's Advent of Code, finally! And as normal, you can join the channel as a Christmas explorer and see all the uncut content before I publish any video. Day 16, the floor will be lava. With a beam of light completely focused somewhere, the reindeer leads you deeper still into the lava production facility. At some point you realize that the steel facility walls have been replaced with the cave. And the doorways are just cave. And the floor is cave. And you're pretty sure this actually just is a giant cave. <laughs> Finally, you approach uh, what must be at the heart of the mountain. And you see a bright light in the ca uh, cave cavern up, up ahead. There you discover... The beam of light you so carefully focused is energy emerging from the cavern wall closest to the facility and pouring all of its energy into a contraption on the opposite side. Upon closer inspection, the contraption appears to be a flat two-dimensional square grid containing empty spaces, mirrors and splitters. The contraptions is aligned so that the most of the beam bounces around the grid but each tile on the grid converts some light beam into heat to melt the rock in the cavern. You note the layout of the contraption of your puzzle input. <clears throat> For example, the beam enters from the top corner of the left and heading to the right. Then its behavior depends on what it encounters as it moves. If the beam encounters an empty space, it continues the same direction. If the beam encounters a mirror, the beam is reflected 90 degrees depending on the angle of the mirror. If the beam encounters a pointy end of a splitter, the beam passes through the splitter as the splitter were empty space. For instance, a rightward moving beam encounters a dash splitter would continue the same direction. If the beam encounters a flat side of a splitter, the beam splits into two beams going in each direction of the splitter pointy ends. Uh, for instance, a rightward moving beam encounters a pipe splitter would split into two beams, one going upwards and one going downwards. The beams are not interact with other beams. Beams do not interact with other beams. The tile can be have many beams passing through them at the right same time. A tile is energized if that tile has at least one beam passing through it, <coughs> reflecting it, splitting it. In this example, uh, the, here is how the uh, beam of light bounces in this contraption. The beams are only shown on empty tiles. Uh, arrows indicates the direction of the beams. If the tile contains beams moving in the multiple directions, the number of their um, distinct directions is shown uh, instead. Here is some, the same diagram, but uh, instead only showing whether the tile is energized or not. Ultimately, in this example, 46 tiles become energized. The light energizing through tiles will to produce lava. Uh, debug uh, the contraption to you need to start by analyzing the situation with beams starting at the top left, heading right. How many tiles end up being energized? I will solve this by creating a beam. So we have beams here. And we also need to have a bunch of lines, I believe. Um, list string lines uh, new array list. There we go. So we just take lines add line. That is our map. Now we can start with a beam. Um, that beams and beam, new beam, and the new beam should have an, an exposition of zero, zero, and a direction of um, east. Create those up here. Uh, private static final int 
north, south. The direction number doesn't really matter. So now we will create that here. Call that x, y. Mm. This x, x, this y, y, this east, out, and direction. Um, and I'm not sure when they started to do these kind of. Uh, Classes, but it would be nice actually to use a record here. I'm not sure if that is in Java 17 that I use now, but or do I use a, a, a later one? Get direction, get x, get y. So now we have those at least. Uh, we can have a uh, public void move a specific direction and in that case we need these to be public mm. public 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 so we can reuse them. Um, if direction equals to north, then y minus minus. Mm. Oh. These can't be final, of course. Direction is still north. We need to put it this direction for it. So we change the right direction value. So now we have a move function. Um, and this should be a beam east. spots <laughs> B mm. so if B get and we also need to have the lines here So here, if c equals to a dot, we need to do something. If c equals a dash, mm, we need to do something. So we need to have a couple of these cages cases <clears throat> pipe slash or backslash so if it's a dot then we can I think the beam also need to have <coughs> uh, visited and I wonder if the correct there is 
a set of points. about these move directions um, but we can get the x or y value yeah so it would be sufficient mm. so this beam it had visited uh, and we will add new points of x, y. So there we have one visited. Mm. And in each of these cases, when we have visited something, we will have that point as well. So then, if it's a dot, we will uh, take this beam and move in the beam direction. So we continue there. Mm. If B get direction equals to beam east or beam west so move that so we have more space um, then we will just continue doing the same as up here we move else we need to split this so then we need to have one going east and one going west So I think this needs to be private static, so we can actually have that. And I don't think this will be happy about me doing things with it. So we create an iterator of beam. Beams iterator. So then we will here instead check if it has next and uh, the beam will be equal to it next. Mm, what's the problem here? Uh huh. While while it has next. So I think that will work mm, and I probably can just put it in here if I don't need it anymore later. So here we should be able to take beams, uh, remove B and then beams add new beam of x, y and the direction of beam north So then we need to do the same with the next splitter here. So now we just need to figure out what to do with this one. In any case, it will change direction. 
So we pretty much need to have a switch. Mm, on B get direction. And case. Beam. North. We'll do something. So it, if it goes north, we will move it to um, west in this case. And if it goes south, then it will go east. If it goes east, it will go uh, north. And if it goes west. So now I think we have all the beams. So we need to have um, old beams or done beams. So this one is done. And the beam there. Those are done, can't be used anymore. And if B is done, then we can remove B old B uh, done beams. Is it done? Well, no, can't do it there. Mm. No, it's uh, if this is dead. the new point then we will say that this is done true else we will add it to add the new point less than zero or y is less than zero or x is larger than uh, size minus one or y is larger than size minus one then done is true as well. Mm. And we can return there as well. Don't need to visit that point. So now we need to uh, add a couple variables here. We need to add a field, which is false. And we need to have Public static final int size equals to 10. Maybe that is the size of it. Mm. Oh, else. There we go. 
is done. We can return that as well. Mm, spot B. And I think we, <laughs> we, we perhaps have written something that we at least can test. While beam, uh, beams is not empty, we will continue here. So let's continue. We add a beam, we handle the spot, we have another beam, we handle the spot. Let's see where we end up now. Mm. Now we have two beams. Mm. I think I only need to have my notebook again. Let's see how it actually looks. Yeah, it looks promising. Looks like we're doing something here. So we have one beam going direction two and one going direction one. And I believe that is correct, right? Mm. One going east and one going west. No. Should be south and uh, so let's do this again. So it goes east, we get that, we handle that spot, it's still going east. And east is one, right? Next, we will handle this spot. It's that one. It's not going north or south. Ah. Mm. We need it to go north and south. In this case, we need it to go east and west. So let's check this again. So now we have one done beam. This has visited two. Concurrent modification exception. That's the reason I did this. <laughs> that I changed this uh, to a beam iterator. Well, then we need to do this. Um, if then break. So here, if, if we get down here, we will return false. And if we do any modification where we remove stuff, then we will return true. So in these cases where we remove and add things, we will return true. Yes, very true. Mm -hmm. Here we will remove. Here we need to break it up. So let's see, we have a y equals to zero y less than 10, y plus plus. And then we do the same for x. Mm. And 
then we will um, do a no line here. If we have a boolean found true false for beam in done beams. If it has visited, then uh, found is true, break, and we can do if found. Well, we can do it just a print found. Then we will do a hash mark. Else we do a point. Just mm, out. Good. Like that. So now I only need to figure out if this has visited. If Now it doesn't stop. That's interesting. Or done beams uh, size is larger than 100. And done beams is less than 100. Now we get that picture. Let's see if that is the correct picture. So it seems to be the right picture. So that's good at least. Um, not sure if the 100 beams breakpoint is the best solution. Um, But let's, let's do a calculation here. Mm, have the same for loop here. Mm. Val plus plus. should at least get the number as well, 46. So let's say for the big one, and I also think this needs to be, uh, it's public size, so if we go down here and say beam size, that should work as well. And we need to figure out how large the input area is. Change the beam to 110. Mm. 6,561. Uh, uh, 6, Let's see if that is the right answer. Oh, we can do what, one thing more we can do. We can actually do, because that went pretty fast. So let's Let's say that we then do 20,000. So we see that it doesn't change. So it takes a little bit longer. 
yeah, we get the 65, 61 as well. So we are probably found the right solution. No, it's too low. Interesting. And I'm back and I found a different value that is higher, but I don't really like it because the change is not really what I expected to do. But let's put it in here and see. Yes, you get a gold star. I get a gold star. Everybody gets a gold star. So let's go into part two and I will first off uh, show you what I did on this case. So I said that in this example, the beam can't decide that it has visited this point already. So don't visit it, visit it again. Which seems to be a bad choice. You should always visit all points. Um, the only case where you don't uh, look at it is when, when uh, you decide that this beam has already, or a beam has already been here. I don't really know why that it's, it's different. If this current beam has been at this point before, it should not visit it again, right? It it, it seems reasonable. Oh, because it comes in a different direction. Yes. Um, so that's why. Okay. So we have a beam that has visited this point but goes in a different direction. That, that, that's reasonable. Okay. So we solved that one. Let's jump into part two. This video series is sponsored. So for all your hosting needs, go to DigitalOcean. If you want to learn something new this Christmas, then you can go to Coursera, take any of those 7,000 courses over there, or follow along with the simple Java course that I've provided as well. And if you want to give your kids something really great for Christmas this year, you can give them a one-on-one -on -one course with a code combat trainer in order to learn coding. All the links can be found in the video description. As you try to work out what might have been wrong, the reindeer tugs on your shirt and leads you to a nearby control panel. There, you, uh, there a collection of buttons lets you align the contraption so you, that the beam enters from any angle um, tile and heading any, away from that edge. You can choose either two, of, uh, of either two directions for the beam if it starts on a corner, for instance, if the beam starts in the bottom right corner, it starts heading left or upwards. Uh, so the beam could start on any tile in the top row leading downwards, any tile in the bottom row leading upwards, any tile in the leftmost column uh, heading right, or any tile in the rightmost column heading left to produce lava. You need to find the configuration that energies, uh, energizes as many tiles as possible. In the above example, this is achieved by a beam and the fourth tile, tile on the left row, this is using uh, 51 tiles are energized. Find the initial beam configuration that energizes the largest number of tiles. How many tiles are energized in the, that configuration? Okay. So we just need to figure out where the start point should be. So what we want to do now is pretty much do this whole uh, whole thing that we do here again, but do it for all entry points. Um, so let's see here. For uh, I zero I less than um, let's see ten I plus plus mm -mm. do that so we do this ten times and we do it with X going east and then uh, this value that we get out. Mm, let's do this. Mm, long, or yeah, 
them smallest or largest. Zero. And here we do long current. So here we do add to current. If current is larger than largest, then no, <laughs> then current equal to largest. Don't print out that. Largest. So let's see. Largest equal to current, of course. Mm. So if we run that, of course. So there we go. So the last one was the largest value I have got. So let's switch over here and see if that is the correct value. Yes, you get a gold star. I get a gold star. Everybody gets a gold star. <laughs> so let's go back and see what we did. Um, so first off, we have this class here where we have this map. We read it in. We just put it into a bunch of lines. Uh, we have two lists here, one with beams and one with the done beams, the beams that we will not follow anymore. And for the last one, we did this kind of thing where we went in all the different directions manually. So we just looped over through the beam size and uh, reset the uh, list over time and had different starting positions. So doing that manually instead of writing some complex thing uh, doesn't really matter to do that. Um, so here we have our while loop. This is pretty much what does it all. This down here is just checking how many we have visited. Uh, going through all of them, checking the done beams and seeing if we have visited this point at, at the moment. So not that in, in, interesting. But here we see if we have any beams that we're still working on, then we will iterate over the beams and we will do this while loop and get the next beam and we will handle that spot. And if this beam is done, we will remove it and add it to done beams. And the is done is just a boolean here. So, um, and I'm not sure if that ever happens now. Um, so in this case, we will when we handle this spot, we will get the current character in our list of strings. If this is a dot, we will just continue moving in that direction. If it's a dash, we will check if the direction currently is east-west going, then we will just move in that direction. Otherwise, this beam will split. So we will remove the beam from the current beams. And if this done beams already contains this beam, then we'll add the path that got us here to the done beams and then just return true, which is saying that we have removed something, so we have some change in the list, so we can't continue iterating. We need to break out and start a new loop. Uh, but if that is not the case, we will add to the done beam, and then we will create two me new beams that goes in the east-west direction, and then return true again, because we have changed the list again, so we need to um, run it over. So this is what this break does here. It breaks this while loop and starts over again. Uh, and then we will uh, continue with the next case when we had a pipe. So this is the north-south direction, just continue moving or split it up in the north-south direction. And then can come this slash and backslash, which is a little bit more complicated, but we pretty much do a switch loop here where we check the direction and if it's north, we go east. If it's south, we go west. If it's east, we go north. If it's west, we go south. So this is for this uh, slash, and we do the same for the backslash. If we go into the beam now, it has these uh, north-south direction uh, ints, 
we have the size of the current uh, map, we have a direction and xy position, we have this beam point, it's a very simple one which just add the current uh, xy position and we also have an equals and a an hash code that has been generated by the system. So nothing strange there. We have a set of beam points where we, what we have visited and we have a done flag. I'm not sure if the done flag would ever be set now, but when we start creating a beam, we say that this beam point has been visited and we set the values. And moving is just going in different directions. So we change the direction to this um, current direction. This could just be uh, um, dear equals to dear, <laughs> pretty much. But if we're going north, we go minus minus on y axis and so on. So this is just changing the values. We will create a new beam point and add that to visited. And if we are outside of the map, so we, if we are lower than zero or higher than um, x, y, the size of the map, then we're done with this. And that is where this is done is returned. Um, and then we can get all the directions and the x, y positions. And we can check if this is already in the done list with these equals and hash code. And we also have this is has visited that we use in order to check how many we have visited. So that's all the code. If you like this, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. If you solved it in a different uh, way, please leave a comment in the comment section down below and explain your solution. I read them all. And I really hope to see you in the next video.